The human body is a biological marvel in every way. It is the perfect physical home for our spirit, for our soul. It is beautiful in every way. It's able to do so many wonderful things. A long time ago, I had the pleasure of attending one of those Cirque du Soleil events and I saw with my eyes the marvel of the potential of what the human body can do through the acts of the acrobats, the jugglers, the contortionists, and so on and so forth. It was beautiful to watch. The things we're able to do with our bodies is magnificent. How high we can jump, run, etc., etc. The body, as beautiful as it is, can be a really good metaphor for how our spirit functions of how our real self functions because it is a physical representation of who we really are. The body is symmetrical in nature. The left side is an almost near perfect mirror image of the right side and vice versa. Both sides or both halves of the body share one heart. One heart is able to pump and circulate blood through the entire body that keeps it going, that keeps it alive. In a sense, the way that your emotions operate is similar. Your conscious self, also known as your personality, and your emotional self, also known as your soul, can be seen as two halves of your spiritual self. Both halves are almost symmetrical in nature to each other and both halves share a common source from where your feelings originate or I should say from where your first and most natural feelings about yourself originate, your source. Your first and most natural state of being Your first feelings about you represent what you know about you without any rational evidence. It is what you came into this world with. It is what you were born with. These feelings include feelings of worthiness. These feelings include feelings of happiness and bliss and just joy. Just like with children when they're very young who just love to be playful who love to be imaginative, who love to exert energy in the having of fun and in expressing joy. Just like that, we also are, because that is our first, our true and original natural perspective. That is the origin of our emotions, of our feelings. Now, The problem, if you can call it that, or the challenge, is when we go against those feelings. Is when, over time, our personality begins to contradict the original, natural way that we function. It's like if the left-hand side of your body decided it wanted the blood to flow in a different direction than it normally should it will cause distress within the body. So also our emotions feel distressful when we deviate from our natural way of being. Every time you go against yourself, every time you go against your knowing, you are causing distress. This is the source of every negative emotion that you've ever experienced, be it anger, Disappointment, even depressive feelings come from this place, which is whenever you decide that what you are is not enough and you look to other things outside of yourself to satisfy you, you will always cause a split in the way that your natural emotions are meant to work. And that split, that gap, represents your negative emotional state of being. Why do we cause ourselves distress? Why do we go against ourselves? Mainly because we were taught so by the world we live in, 
we have been trained in so many ways to go against our better judgment and conform to whatever rules have been set before us. This is no fault of anyone's. It's just an observation. How wonderful will it be if you stay true to that inward knowing within you, that still voice that speaks to you on every matter concerning you, that tells you what is what and what is right. The voice is so still and quiet that it's easy to sometimes miss. And it speaks usually just once on a matter and it never gives reasons. It never looks at the evidence. It just tells you this is right or this is wrong. Most of you call it red flags. Some of you call it intuition. It's the same thing. Your worthiness speaks through the voice of your intuition. And it does so because it doesn't want you to be distressed in your emotional state. It doesn't want you to feel bad. It doesn't want you to feel disappointed. It doesn't want you to feel depressed. It is a mechanism that every human being came into this world with as a guide into that thing, into that purpose for which they were born. It is where your happiness lies. It is the voice of your happiness. It is the voice of your fullness. It is the voice of who you really are. In this new year, if you can make a commitment to being more attentive to that still voiceless voice within you as it speaks to you about what you know for sure about you and as it guides you into all things about you. You are loved. You are adored. You are a miracle. You are the impossible that has been made possible. Mathematically, you ought not to exist, yet here you are because you came to deliver, to execute a purpose for the expansion of all that is good in this world. Let no man, let no human, let no condition tell you different. You were born into this because it is who you are. And as you continue to stay within your intuitive direction, within your intuitive Understanding within your intuitive knowing, your life and all that you are about will never be the same. It will be fun and delightful. It will be a place of deliciousness for you and comfort. It will be a beautiful life. It will be a life of beatitudes from here to there, from there to here. Everything about you is perfect. But the world needs you to allow yourself to express that perfection in the way that only you can. And the way to express that perfection is to listen to who you really are. To listen to the intuitive voice that is within you, telling you what to do, where to go, and how to be in the most natural most original, most effortless way possible that is unique to you. Have a great 2018. It has been a pleasure bringing this soul-stirring study and conversation to you. I am Harry Ogbogu. And on behalf of those whose work and support made this production possible, I thank you and are grateful for the time I've spent with you and are even more grateful for your upliftment and for any expansion of your understanding about who you are. Feel free to reach out to this podcast with comments and questions you are wanting answers to and we shall address as many as we can on upcoming shows. No question is off limits. If we pick your letters or questions to address on the show, in order to protect your privacy, your name will not be used unless otherwise permitted expressly by you. Send your email questions and comments to harry at weira.me. The email address again is harry, H-A-R-R-Y, at weira, W-A-Y-R-A, dot M-E. We would love for you to like, subscribe, and share this podcast, and we cannot wait to be heard by you again. 
Until next time, I am your host, Terry Ogbogo, and I am in joy of your company, and I pray that you are in joy of yours too. Stay being well.